Hello everyone, welcome to Daily Code. Today we are going to learn what garbage collector is and how garbage collection works in case of .NET Core. So let's get started. First, let us go through the fundamentals of garbage collection. The garbage collector acts as the automatic memory manager. It manages the allocation and release of the memory for an application, which means that as developers, when we are working with managed code, this means that we don't have to write code to perform memory management tasks. That is freeing up the memory which was allocated as part of execution of the code which we have written. This helps in avoiding certain memory leak issues. Coming to the benefits of garbage collection, it frees the devs from manually releasing the allocated memory. So when the code is getting executed, the memory which is allocated by the variables or the objects which are created during the execution of the code gets allocated in mainly two places. One being the stacks and second the heaps. In stacks, all the value types are stored such as integer, boolean, etc. These are value types, whereas in heaps, all the reference types are stored. For instance, if I create an instance of class car, the memory which the instance of the class will require will be allocated in heap and its reference will be stored in stack. So in this case, the garbage collection helps us in efficiently managing the heaps where the reference types are allocated. GC helps in reclaiming the objects that are no longer required in the execution of the code and then clears the memory allocated by them so that any other object's allocation can be done in the same memory location. GC provides memory safety by making sure that the memory occupied by an object cannot be allocated to any other object, which the previous one is still being referenced in the code. Now looking at some fundamentals of memory, all the processes running on a system share the same physical memory and page file. Each process running in the system has its own virtual address space. As an application developer, we usually deal with the virtual address space and never actually manipulate the physical memory space. The garbage collector allocates and frees the virtual memory on the managed heap. Virtual memory can be in three states, free, reserved, and committed. First, the free state. A block of memory without any reference and is free for allocation is in free state. Second, the reserved state. It is any memory space which is currently being used by some process and cannot be allocated by another process until this is committed. And thirdly, the committed state is the block of memory which is assigned to the physical storage. The virtual address space can get fragmented, which means that after some cycles of memory allocations and deallocations, the address space might have some free address spaces between two allocated sections, which are called holes. These are created because when allocation request is made, the OS has to find a single free block, which can satisfy the allocation request and consecutive cycles might end up in creating holes. Coming to memory allocation and memory release, when a new process is initialized, the runtime reserves a contiguous region of address space for the process. This reserve address space is called managed heap. The managed heap maintains the pointer to the address where the next object in the heap will be allocated. Initially, the pointer is set to the managed heap's base address. All reference types are allocated on the managed heap. When an application creates the first reference type, memory is allocated for the type at the base address of the managed heap. When the application creates the next object, the garbage collector allocates memory for it in the address space immediately following the first object. As long as the address space is available, the garbage collector continues to allocate space for new objects in this manner. Allocating memory from the managed heap is faster than unmanaged memory allocation because the runtime allocates memory for an object by adding a value to a pointer. It's almost as fast as allocating memory from the stack. In addition, 
because new objects that are allocated consecutively are stored contiguously in the managed heap an application can access the objects quickly coming to the memory relief the garbage collectors optimizing engine determines the best time to perform collection based on the allocations being made when the garbage collector performs a collection it releases the memory for objects that are no longer being used by the application it determines which objects are no longer being used by examining the application's roots an application's roots include static fields local variables on a thread stack cpu registers gc handles and the finalized queue each root either refers to an object on the managed heap or is set to null the garbage collector can ask the rest of the runtime for these roots using this list the garbage collector creates a graph that contains all the objects that are reachable from the roots objects that are not in the graph are unreachable from the application's roots the garbage collector considers unreachable objects garbage and releases the memory allocated for them during a collection the garbage collector examines the managed heap looking for the blocks of address space occupied by unreachable objects as it discovers each unreachable object it uses a memory copying function to compact the reachable objects in memory freeing up the blocks of address spaces allocated to unreachable objects once the memory of the reachable objects has been compacted the garbage collector makes the necessary pointer correction so that the application's roots point to the objects in the new location it also positions the managed heap pointer after the last reachable object memory is compacted only if a collection discovers a significant number of unreachable objects if all the objects in the managed heap survive a collection then there is no need for memory compactions coming to the conditions which are necessary for garbage collection the system has low physical memory this is detected by either the low memory notification from the os or low memory as indicated by the host the memory that's used by allocated objects on the managed heap surpasses an acceptable threshold this threshold is continuously adjusted as the process runs the gc.collect method is called in almost all cases you don't have to call this method because the garbage collector runs continuously this method is primarily used for unique situations and testing coming to the generations the garbage collection primarily occurs with the reclamation of short lived objects to optimize the performance of the garbage collector the managed heap is divided into three generations 0 1 and 2 so it can handle long lived and short lived objects separately the garbage collector stores new objects in generation 0 objects created early in the application's lifetime that survive collections are promoted and stored in generation 1 and 2 because it's faster to compact a portion of the managed heap than the entire heap this scheme allows the garbage collector to release the memory in a specific generation rather than releasing the memory for the entire managed heap each time it performs a collection coming to generation 0 this is the youngest generation and contains short lived objects example the temporary variable garbage collection occurs most frequently in this generation newly allocated objects from a new generation of objects these are implicitly generation 0 collections however if they are large objects they go on the large object heap which is sometimes referred to as generation 3 most objects are reclaimed for garbage collection in generation 0 and don't survive the next generation if an application attempts to create a new object when generation 0 is full the garbage collector performs a collection in an attempt to free address space for that object the garbage collector starts by examining the objects in generation 0 rather than all objects in the managed heap a collection of generation 0 alone often reclaims enough memory to enable the application to continue creating new objects coming to generation 1 this generation contains the short lived objects and serves as a buffer between short lived objects and long lived objects after the garbage collector performs a collection of generation 0 it compacts the memory for the reachable objects and promotes them to generation 
because objects that survive collections tend to have longer lifetimes it makes sense to promote them to a higher generation the garbage collector doesn't have to re-examine the objects in generation 1 and 2 each time it performs a collection of generation 0. If a collection of generation 0 does not reclaim enough memory for the application to create new object, the garbage collector can perform a collection of generation 1 then generation 2. Objects in generation 1 that survive collections are promoted to generation 2. Now coming to generation 2. This generation contains long-lived objects, example an object in a server application that contains static data that's lived for the duration of the process. Objects in generation 2 that survive a collection remain in generation 2 until they are determined to be unreachable in the future collection. Garbage collections occur on specific generations as conditions warrant. Collecting a generation means collecting objects in that generation and all its younger generations. A generation 2 garbage collection is also known as a full garbage collection because it reclaims objects in all generation, that is all objects in the managed heap. I hope this short talk about how garbage collection works in case of .NET Core was helpful to you. Thank you.